So there's a drum movie out there. Not, not quite my temple. That rests on a number of erroneous premises. Plenty of other YouTubers have already taken it apart. And in keeping with my goal to mention the movie as little as possible, I'll leave that to them. The featured tune in that movie, however, provides us with a springboard to talk about something interesting. What makes a tune hard? Is Caravan among the most difficult pieces to play on the drums? If not, which other tunes are more difficult? Finally, is it okay for a tune to aspire to difficulty for its own sake? Let's start from the whole concept of what makes a tune difficult to play. As you may know, I'm doing a mini-series of lessons on the subject, and I have some hunches. But let's start with Caravan itself, since at least some clickers on this lesson probably clicked on it in the hopes it would actually deliver on the promise of its title. And I will say, for a newish big band drummer, Caravan definitely presents some challenges. First, there's the beat that makes the whole thing tick. A jazzified version of a beat called the songo. As I understand it, a drummer named Jose Luis Quintana, or Changuito, invented the songo in the early 1970s as a way for the drum kit player to accompany the other drummers in a mambo without getting in the way of what they were doing. Here's what I would consider to be a basic songo, although I've sort of learned it with the clave in the left foot and it's difficult to unlearn it, but three, four. And here's one with the mambo. That mambo sounds hot, right? God, I love mambos. Now, for an experienced drummer, playing the songo isn't that much of a challenge. But I can definitely flash back a few years to a time when keeping an unfamiliar beat down at the same time as hitting figures would have been nerve-wracking. There are two other things that make Caravan a challenge for green drummers. First, there are the figures themselves. Learning to set up figures in the big band idiom is a learning curve. Here's a clip of one of the famous figures from Caravan. Now, when we first learn to read, many of us are tempted to simply play the figures. Like this. Three, four. But in a big band setting, especially in this idiom, you can't do that. You have to set up the figures. More like this. Three, four. And the elephant in the room is the sheer amount of soloing. Seeing bars and bars of solo on your chart and then some challenging figures to hit after it can definitely be challenging for a novice drummer. Especially with a taskmaster in your face. Word to the wise, guys. Practice those charts before you bring them in for rehearsal. Let's look at a real-life big band tune, which is hard in all the same ways Caravan is, but which is more difficult. This is Ice Nine by Steve Wiest. We used to play with the Maynard Ferguson band, and who has for years conducted the One O'Clock Lab Band in North Texas. Anyway, I say Ice Nine is real life for a few reasons. First, it's kind of a flex tune, in the same way Caravan is supposed to be in the movie. Second, others have talked about the fact that the way the band plays Caravan in the movie is not as virtuosic as it would be in real life, owing mainly to the fact that the low budget in the movie and the fact that they probably had to get a decent high school band to perform it. This is a good example of what a real band of the type the movie tries to depict would probably sound like. <laughs> I like this as a basis for comparison, also, because it's hard in the same way Caravan's hard. You've got figures to hit, but they're more challenging. 
And you've got multiple different beats to maintain underneath it, from backbeat funk to this weird Birdland, double halftime, stick click thing. And when I say Ice Nine is a flex tune, we'll come back to what that means. More broadly, the ways in which Ice Nine is difficult are just a few of the ways in which tunes can be hard. This video on Caravan interrupts what was to be an ongoing series of lessons on what makes tunes difficult to play. A few weeks ago, I did a lesson on a tune called Cars One by Tigran Hamasian. Cars 1 is difficult for the same reason a lot of Tigran's music is. And it's a layer of complexity that has nothing to do with anything you can really find in Caravan. And that's keeping two contrary meters in your head at once. In this section, the band has to keep both 4 4 and 5 8 in their heads at the same time. The underlying beat is in 5, but the chorus has a phrase that's in 4 4. That's also on display in a tune called Entertain Me, which was the subject of a minor video. In this example, listen to Arthur Natick keep four with the backbeat at the same time as he makes reference to a counter meter that's going on underneath it. The movie's other major tune featured odd meter and some additive rhythm, but nothing on the order of this. This is a tune called Announcement by the Finnish pianist Mika Poyola. This is textbook additive rhythm, because maintaining a common beat doesn't really get you anywhere. You might as well just memorize all the little twists and turns. Another tune that does this, for all intents and purposes, is Tigran's tune, Out of the Grid. Here, it's not the polymeter you're memorizing, so much as all these 516 rest bars and the exceptions to the main rhythm. Then there's VJ Iyer's Historicity. This solo section contains a bar of 2 4, a bar of 3 8, and a bar of 5. A phrase that repeats with an interlude of 7 8 and 3. The challenge for Vijay's band, as I'll talk about later, is doing this all without breaking a sweat. Finally, there are many more ways to be challenging in the same ways that Caravan is. Catching figures, then soloing over them, for instance. This is Ben Wendell's tune frame. The coda features a bit of a polymeter, since you have to keep both an angular Baseline and also crazy angular ensemble figures in your head at one time. Or just plain old fashioned, hard to remember, hard to count, counterintuitive figures. Like the coda to frame, Gerald Clayton's Sir Third is in four, but good luck counting through all of the figures without a headache. The best idea is probably just to memorize it. Which brings us to the jazz snob portion of this lesson. I mentioned that Ice Nine, like Caravan, is kind of a flex tune. <laughs> And what I take that to mean is that it's supposed to sound difficult purely for difficulty's sake. Now, 
I love this type of stuff, but it's kind of maybe like the McDonald's of music a little bit. Like Paganini of Franz Liszt. Both wrote music to showcase their virtuosic instrumental skills, but neither is really talked about in the same breath as composers like Rachmaninoff or Chopin, not to mention Beethoven or Brahms. To please art snobs, and I'm using this phrase because of my ambivalence about art snobbery, the music has to aspire to more than just demonstrating the skill of the musicians performing it. Take Tigran. Think about the feeling you get in your body as Arthur Natick performs those figures in Entertain Me. It's the same part of your body that used to respond to Metallica or Slayer. This is cool not because it's difficult, but because it's got two, three, and five beat phrases that kind of dance. And also because it's metal. The ultimate counter signal is a tune that doesn't sound difficult, but which is difficult, like Sir Third or Cars 1. In both, the difficulty is secondary to the musical goal. In Sir Third, it's this key center shifting, off kilter sort of whimsy. And in Cars, it's the folk, well, dirge metal. Which brings us full circle to why do people write difficult tunes? To illustrate, I want to call attention to a detail Adam Neely noticed about the movie. Look at these guys. They look like they're watching an interrogation. By contrast, watch everybody playing Ice Nine. For the musicians, playing something challenging is about flow state. That feeling you get when you're doing something challenging that requires your focus, but you pull it off. Flow state's fun. If you want examples of hard tunes that aren't in flow state, look no further than recital videos. And I want to shout out a very brave group of students who performs Mark Turner's Jackie's Place on a recital and basically nails it. And I want to make it clear that I'm not picking on these guys because they do a difficult tune and they play it really well, but it's pretty clear nobody's having any fun. By contrast, check out this clip of Eric Harland soloing with the SF Jazz Collective. It's virtuosic and Eric's clearly in flow state, so everybody's having fun. Sure, there's suspense, but it's mostly how hard can Eric crush it? Answer, pretty hard. You don't want me to stop it, do you? It's also what the Buddy Rich big band, by all accounts the inspiration for the band in the movie, was conspicuously lacking. Man, it looks like a chore. But I think Buddy's band is kind of the exception that proves the rule. So, is Caravan the most difficult piece to play on the drums? Not by a long shot. And let's be honest, it's not even that great an arrangement. Even Ice Nine, a total flex tune, is a lot more fun to listen to. I'd a thousand times rather listen to Duke Ellington's Haunting Original. Okay, that's the lesson. And like some of the others, because I'm doing so much fair use in this one, no sales pitch. But what you can do is, if you enjoyed this, if you found it inspirational, please share it with somebody you know. And also leave a comment below. Let me know a time when you had to play a challenging piece of music and what you did to overcome it. Okay guys, see you next time. Yay, we're done. Thank Christ, the last speaking part. We got it all. Oh my God. There are two other things that make Caravan a challenge for green. Uh -huh.